Good morning, Rakunia. I'm Cross Daly, here with Rakunia Morning News. Today's top stories include President-elect Joseph Biden gives his victory speech, and a bloodthirsty mob has raged war outside the streets of Rakunia. We go live now to the leaders of the militia who have agreed to a ceasefire in order to explain why and what they are fighting for today. Hey, Cross. Thanks for coming out. Appreciate the support. We are fighting for our right to be the best console and the only console anyone ever says good things about. That is what defines us as PlayStation fans, and we will not stop until these Xbox people know that they are second rate and will never be better than us, because we are PlayStation. Thank you for that insightful piece of propaganda. Now, on to the other side of this equation, where Team Xbox would like to make a statement. Hey, Cross. Thank you so much for this chance to explain our side of the story. As you know, we're Team Xbox over here, and this is our fourth console, and we're just happy we made it this far. You know, Sega only had four consoles, and we're about to buy them, so I think that's pretty good. And we are gonna take those awful, dirty PlayStation <laughs> and their stupid Wi-Fi router and bury it in the ground. Sergeant, I hear Team Xbox! They're saying parallel sticks on a controller are stupid! The ceasefire is over! PlayStation gamers, rise up for the executive salary! Alright, Captain, I heard the Sony boys! They're making fun of the battery pack again! Curse you, Sony ponies! We told you, you can buy a chargeable pack separately! Team Xbox, the time is now! For the shareholders! Oh, it's just a bloodbath over there. Can anyone stop the fighting? Wait. Breaking news, I'm receiving a report that local gamer, Bander SN, has come up with a way to stop the fighting. We go live now to his apartment, where he will explain the research that he's found. That's right, Cross. It's me, Bander SN, with another video about the console wars. And I appreciate you putting all the lives of these violent gamers in my well-qualified hands. It's the beginning of a new console generation. The, the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 are here, and it's high time you made a decision. Pick a side. You can't have it both ways. PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X. Which one are you going to pick this holiday season? Time's up. Can't decide? Well, too bad. It's off to the war zone with you. We'll let these guys help you make a decision. But if you're willing to listen for a while, I do have a bit of experience comparing consoles to each other. And today, I've laid out a seven-point strategy all about the new consoles and which one should have your attention this holiday season. What are these seven points, you ask? Well, they are, in my opinion, the most important aspects that you want to consider when purchasing a new console. Things like exclusives, things like feature sets, and even the controller itself. We're going to be going in-depth on these consoles and figuring out which is, truly, the best next-gen experience. Category number one, launch titles. Now, in the long run, launch titles, not the most important thing in the world, but in the first couple of years, they can really give a console the momentum it needs to succeed. Now on the PlayStation 5 side, we've got Spider-Man Miles Morales. Looks good, great development team, promising reviews. Astrobot's Playroom. Looks good, great development team, promising reviews. Bugsnax. Looks good, great development team, promising reviews. Got the Demon's Soul remake. Looks amazing. Godfall. Looks more fall than God. The Pathless. Looks good, great development team, promising reviews. And the last is Sackboy's Big Adventure. A game that hasn't gotten any previews or reviews, but as a big fan of 3D platformers, this game definitely has my attention. And on the Xbox side, we have Yakuza. In all honesty, with backwards compatibility and Game Pass, Xbox has plenty of games to keep your attention until something like Cyberpunk comes out. 
And while it doesn't have the exclusive lineup that Sony does, it definitely has enough to warrant a buy at launch. But it's clear that Sony has the advantage here. Category 2, Features. On Microsoft's side, Xbox is touting core new features like smart delivery, backwards compatibility, and of course the evergreen Game Pass. Game Pass is the best deal in gaming, and it's only getting better with games constantly being added, and new features like EA Play, all of Bethesda's titles, and even Disney Plus subscriptions. You can even get free food delivery! Smart delivery is an interesting concept that seems to be more of a marketing buzzword, but Quick Resume, now that's a feature with some meat on it. With Quick Resume, you can have a bunch of games running at the exact same time, with the ability to swap between them at a moment's notice. Now, of course, they aren't exactly running at the same time, they're just being held in a safe state, but when you can load up into each one of them in less than a minute and jump back and forth between them, what's really the difference? PlayStation has cards and hints. Are games really going to use this? Of course, PlayStation 5 will have most of the features available on PlayStation 4, and the new features they do have are pretty exciting, but, but Xbox is definitely bringing in new features that are going to become standards of console experiences in the future. Category 3, Launch Window. Now, you can say launch games are important to a console's success, but it's the first year of games that really sets the stage for the console's future. And once again, on the PlayStation side, you have an abundance of cool exclusives coming within the first year. Ratchet & Clank, Gran Turismo, Horizon Forbidden West, God of War 2, Final Fantasy 16, Deathloop, Ghostwire Tokyo, Kenna Bridge of Spirits, and who knows what else. On the Xbox side, we're not really sure what's coming in 2021. We know Halo Infinite got delayed recently, and is scheduled to be released in 2021, but with some of the recent developments, it's hard to tell whether or not this game is actually going to come out in a timely manner. And as far as the other Microsoft Studio games that have been announced, none of them have clear release dates, and some of them look like they're pretty far away from launching. And aside from some larger scale indie games, Microsoft doesn't seem to have anything major planned for 2021 other than Halo Infinite. And sure, a game like Forza or Hellblade could surprise us with a late 2021 release date, but at this point, it's hard to tell whether or not Xbox really has anything for next year. So with that, we're giving another point to PlayStation. Now for Category 4, we're going to be talking about power, which is usually a pretty simple comparison. Normally, it's just straight numbers, but for this generation, there are a few more categories that I think we should consider when talking about power. The speed of the SSD and the size of the SSD. And while the Xbox Series X is more powerful in base numbers, it's the PlayStation 5 that has the faster SSD. But when it comes to storage space, Xbox clearly has the advantage, one terabyte over 825 gigabytes. When thinking about which console is gonna run games better, it's very difficult to tell. I'm sure most exclusive games are gonna be running very well on, the, on their own platforms. As far as the third party games go, Usually it's the more powerful console that gets the better version. Although sometimes when a console sells way more than its competition, that tends to be the better running console. So with that, Sony has the advantage in speed and Xbox has the advantage in power and storage base. So I'm gonna give the point to Microsoft. Category five, backwards compatibility. Sony has made a great effort in ensuring a ton of PlayStation 4 games are running on the PlayStation 5 and they even run better and faster than they ever had on the previous generation console. The PlayStation 5 is probably Sony's best effort in ensuring backwards compatibility is a core feature of the PlayStation platform, but it's not even close to what Microsoft is offering. Microsoft has backwards compatibility for every single generation of Xbox games. Combine that with Game Pass, which is ensuring that every single first party game that Microsoft has ever released is available on day one on the console. All you need is the subscription. If you have saves run through Xbox 360's cloud service, you can transfer them to your Xbox Series X for free. That is such a huge convenience that even on PlayStation 4, you have to have PlayStation Plus subscription in order to transfer games over. So without a doubt, Xbox wins this one. Category number six is the controller. Now, I will admit to you right here and right now, the Xbox One controller is my favorite controller ever. It's got a great button layout, high quality build, good battery life, and it just has that good hand feel that you need for a controller. That being said, I'm giving the point to PlayStation 5. It's not that the DualSense is my favorite design for a controller, but it is trying things that are radically different than any controller design that I've ever seen before. It's got a built-in microphone, a second generation share button, and the two core gameplay features, haptic feedback and adaptive triggers. Now, we don't know exactly how these will be implemented in, in games in the future. We don't even know if games will even use these features going forward. But at the start of this generation, these are looking to be the core features that are going to change the way you play games. For category number seven, we have to talk about potential of the consoles. It's a difficult concept to nail down, so let me give you my thoughts on how I'm going about deciding here. When it comes to the potential of a console, a lot of things factor into it. 
You have to look at games that are coming out for it, games that are announced for it, games that could come to it, the development studios that the game has, the feature sets of the console. There's a lot of things you really need to think about. I think on the PlayStation side, you're looking at what will hopefully be a similar experience to the PlayStation 4. A great console with great games from great developers that are coming out at a consistent and high quality pace. Looking at the last few years of the PlayStation 4 life cycle, Sony did not stop producing games from 2017 onward. Even leading into the PlayStation 5's launch, Sony released arguably some of the best games they ever produced of all time. So I have no doubt that going into 2022 and beyond that Sony is going to continue to bring amazing exclusives to their platform, and that is the core part of their experience. On the Xbox side, however, Xbox's ones list of exclusives don't leave me with a whole lot to be excited about. Xbox really struggled bringing core quality exclusives to their player base in a timely manner. They did occasionally bring out a great game or two, but nothing compared to the pace that PlayStation was using. However, ever since early 2018, Xbox has made it its mission to gather a team of Xbox Game Studio developers that can produce core exclusive titles at a rapid pace for the Xbox and Xbox Game Pass. Now, a lot of these game studios were leaning towards the indie side, but hopefully with the financial support of Xbox and Microsoft, these, these development studios can eventually become as strong as PlayStation's offering. Furthermore, with the recent acquisition of Bethesda, Microsoft now has some of the biggest talent in all of gaming. Bethesda is a huge get, and games released from them are always ones you have to pay attention to. Things like Doom, things like Wolfenstein, things like Starfield. Now, of course, obviously the next two games from Bethesda are going to be exclusive to PlayStation 5, but beyond 2021, Bethesda games are going to be exclusive for the Xbox platform. And I think when you get out that far, even the current lineup of Xbox Studios are going to finally be operating on all cylinders. It's hard to tell if this strategy is going to pay off, but at least with Bethesda being backed by Microsoft money, you know that those games are going to be coming out at a decent pace and of a higher quality than they ever have been. So who wins when it comes to potential? It's really hard to say. Microsoft is clearly not stopping in terms of acquisitions, so we're going to continue to see more and more games come to that platform. Game Pass is constantly expanding, bringing in new features, but PlayStation, in my opinion, has the better games list. So who wins potential? Well, to be honest, I think they both win. I think it's a tie. Which means, if it's a tie, then both consoles have merit? Both consoles are a good choice? There's value in whichever decision you make. Both consoles are right! There is no wrong answer! We've done it! We figured it out! Ah! Wait! Stop! Please! Just hear me out! I've done the math, I've done the research! And both consoles have their merits! Maybe in separate categories, maybe it's not one-to-one, -one, but I don't think you need to fight over which one's best. Because in the end, I don't think they're comparable. They both bring different things to the tables. You can even have both and still get unique experience out of either. Now you both have something fun to look forward to this week. Don't waste time by fighting amongst yourselves. Go off and play your games. And maybe, just maybe, we can live together in peace. <laughs> Crackdown 3! <laughs> it's a good game! Stop listening to reviewers! Well, at least the fighting stopped and uh, crossplay should be a thing now, so... Looks like we did our jobs! The fighting's over, people are going back to the consoles, and people are relatively happy. I guess that's a win even if they'll never agree that both consoles have their merits. Besides, if it isn't obvious to everyone, Nintendo is clearly the best platform. I don't know why they're even bothering. A Nintendo fan? I mean, look, a Stadia fan!